Good morning. Thank you, Jenna. I love having the youth share their talents with us. That was so nice. Well, I'm Sheila Burgess, and I'd like to welcome you to Sterling First United Methodist Church, and we're so glad that you've come to worship with us this morning in person or via live stream. A couple of announcements to make. Flu vaccines will be available in our church office this Wednesday, November 10th, from 4.30 to 6.30. And please be sure to bring your insurance card and an ID. If we can be in prayer for you, please let us know via the church office. We'd love to be praying for you in any way that we can. Are there other, any other announcements? If not, then please turn your attention to the worship team as we prepare our hearts for worship. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. As we transition into a time of worship, I'd love to read just a few verses out of Philippians 4. And it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthen, strengthens me. So let's stand together in worship to the God who teaches us true contentment and thankfulness and who helps us to say it is well. When peace, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Sin 
Father God, thank you so much for the blessing it is to be a part of your family, a part of the body of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the incredible joy it is in the good and the bad and everything in between to still have the ability to be thankful and joyful and content because your Holy Spirit gives us the power to do so as long as we focus on the goodness that is all around us because you are all around us. God, thank you that we can focus on whatever is lovely and commendable and true and holy because you are the perfect representation of all of those things. So God, as we, as we look behind us, at all of the goodness that has followed us all the days of our life, as you say in Psalm 23. And as we look ahead and we see that path of your goodness ahead of us, God, just teach us thankfulness. Teach us to be grateful for the highs and the lows and everything in between. Teach us to love each other, to reach out on our own as as your spirit guides and directs us so that when we see someone who's hurting or when we haven't seen someone and we're wondering how they are, that you, through your Holy Spirit, can be with us as we come close to those people, as we minister to them, as we ask them, how are you? And as we earnestly seek the true answer. Um, God, we just love you. And we try our best to be your light in the world, but we need your help to do that. So we pray that you would fill each and every one of us with your spirit and with your goodness so that everything we say and everything we do would be an honest expression of worship to you. We love you so much, Father, and we pray all of these things in your name. Amen.
sing your goodness. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Sing that again. Do you believe it? Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. So, so good with every breath that I am in, I will see of the goodness of God. I will see of the goodness of God. Amen. You may be seated. On Brian. Oh, there we go. We got it. Hello. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Good. Do you guys feel extra rested after that extra hour of sleep? Yeah? Cool. That's a nice bonus to wake up to this morning, huh? Okay, well, I have a question, okay? And this might be showing how old I am, but I'm going to see if you guys have ever... Just raise your hand for me if you've ever seen Dora the Explorer. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay, I feel a little bit better. Anybody out there, have you seen Dora the Explorer? Okay, everybody in my generation puts their hands up. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. Thank you. I'm not alone. Cool. So, you know how in Dora the Explorer, she and her friend Boots and the map and the backpack and all of her friends, they go on this adventure? What do they sing at the end of every episode? What is, what is the song that Dora sings at the end of every episode? Do you remember? Oh, okay. Yeah. What are, what are they celebrating? What are they celebrating at the end of that, of every episode? That they made it, that they did it, right? They sing, Loisimos, we did it, right? That song used to get stuck in my head all the time. All the time. When I was a little kid and I was watching it, and then when I was a little bit older and I was babysitting kids who were watching it. And we think about, you know, like, circumstances where we've been a little bit like Dora, maybe, right? Maybe we were on a sports team, and we fought really, really hard all season, and we got first place, or we at least placed in the tournament at the end of the year, or the end of the season. Have you guys ever felt like that? And you're like, yes, we did it. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. A few nods. I'll take it. So what we're going to be talking about today, though, is a guy named Noah. You guys ever heard of a guy named Noah in the Bible? What did Noah do? He built an ark, right? Because God said he was going to flood the whole earth, right? So Noah spends all this time, like 100 years or something crazy, building this huge ark, and he gets all of these animals, two of every kind, to get in the ark, right? And then he has to get in the ark with all the animals and all of the stuff that comes with the animals, like the, the girls' stuff. Yeah, that we don't want to talk about. Yeah, so all that stuff's in the ark with him. And he has to be in close quarters with his family for 40 days. Could you guys hang out just alone at home with your families for 40 days? <laughs> it doesn't sound very fun, right? 
So when he, what do you think Noah felt when he got to get out of the ark at the end of those 40 days? He probably felt, you want to think he felt like Dora, right? He just walks out and with double fists in the air, we did it! Right? But Noah does something different. And I think it's so cool. Instead of double fisting it in the air and saying, we did it, as soon as he gets out of the ark, he builds an altar to God. And he worships God and he says, God, you did it. And he thanks God for getting, in, getting them through the flood and all those 40 days hanging out with his family and all those animals. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah? So as Pastor Amy comes and tells us more about that, and as we go throughout our weeks, I want us to think about how can we be thankful to God for the things that he helps us do, right? Even in those moments where we want to say, oh, yeah, I did it, right? Because really God did it, didn't he? Yeah? Cool. Can we pray? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for these awesome kiddos and for this time. God, I just pray that you would give us thankful hearts that would acknowledge that you are the one who does all of this stuff in our lives. Um, And we can just worship you and thank you for all of the good that you do for us. We love you and we praise you and we pray all of this in your name. Amen. Have a seat. Thank you, Katie. In the 100th Psalm, we are reminded to enter his gates or enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. So what do you have today that is praiseworthy? What are you thankful for as we come into worship together? I'll start. I am so thankful to have Jenna and Katie share their musical gifts and talents with us this morning. And I'm thankful you all are here. What else do you have to be thankful for? Let's just shout it out. We're going to shout out our praises. What are you thankful for today? Grandchildren. Sunshine and warmth. Jordan's dad's home from the hospital. Golden leaves.
so many things. You know, when we are thankful, when we have a spirit of gratitude, we are not to keep that to ourselves. We are to sing that out. We are to share that with one another. So as we work our way towards Thanksgiving, I've got a couple of different ways that we can continue to share our Thanksgiving and praise. In the Narthex, I've set up a gratitude jar. So if you come in on, as we enter those doors, as we enter these gates, write down your thanksgivings and praise and put it in the jar and to take home and, or to uh, put it in the jar there. And then on Thanksgiving Sunday, we're going to bring all those thanksgivings up together and celebrate those blessings. Also, because we know that we just shouldn't uh, reserve our praise and thanksgivings for one hour on Sunday morning, there are some smaller jars that you could take home. Those are gratitude jars. And that when you sit down with your family or when you get up in the morning or even when you're sitting by yourself, if you could take some sheets of paper and write down some things that you are thankful for, something that you're grateful for, put those in those little jars and then even on Sunday morning you could bring those in and empty that into you know, the bigger jar so that we can build up for this great day of Thanksgiving. So just a couple of things to help keep us going and to be mindful of things to be grateful for. Because it's important, because the practice of gratitude, it opens us up to have a full and meaningful life. And here's why. Gratitude is a connector. Gratitude is a relationship builder. When we are able to see and to name where and how God is working in the world around us, we are able to grasp the grace that he offers us. Then it opens us up in turn to share that same grace with others. It is through gratitude that we grow to appreciate life's goodness, which compels us or which should compel us to pay it forward. Our scripture reading today, we find a great example of someone living a life out of gratitude as we are able to witness one of the first acts of gratefulness through the life of Noah. So today for our scripture reading, I'll be reading from Genesis 8, verses 15 through 20. So here we go. Then God said to Noah, Go out of your ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that was, is with, all of, with you, all of your all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. And every animal, every creeping thing, and every bird, and everything that moves on the earth went out of the ark by families. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal out of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Now, after being on the ark, for approximately a year, Noah walks off that boat and then he builds an altar to the Lord. Noah's first recorded act upon leaving the ark was an act of gratitude. Now, I must honestly admit, I've heard the story about Noah building the ark dozens and dozens and dozens of times. It's one of those go to classics that we teach our children. And over and over again, we tell the story, and we know the story about how God told Noah to build a boat. We remember how he was ridiculed and people thought he was a little out of his mind to undertake such a project. We remember how he gathered the animals two by two and how the rains came down and the floods came up. And we delight in that beautiful appearance of a rainbow. And for most of us, we think that that's where the story ends. 
we forget about that next verse. We forget about verse 20. But for Noah, it's not an ending. It's, it's really just the beginning for Noah and his family for a new life in a new place, in a new way. When listening to this story, we often get, up for, get caught up for good reason of what God does. And we often gloss over about what Noah does we, or his response. So let me read it again. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and every clean bird and offered burnt offerings to the altar. We must not forget it. We must not trivialize it, but rather we must see this as an extraordinary act of thankfulness. In this action, Noah expresses his fullness of gratitude. Now, and I got to admit, if I were Noah's wife, I'm not sure after spending a whole year or so on an ark full of animals and every creature along with my husband and my kids, I mean, as much as I love them, I don't know that my first plan of action would be to build an altar. But then again, Tylenol and hot showers probably weren't a thing back then. But after all this time, after being tossed around and, and walking around the mess that animals leave, Noah makes a conscious decision. The very, very first thing he does is to say thank you to God. God didn't command it. He didn't require it. This was a heartfelt, responsive act of gratefulness for bringing he and his family safely to shore. This was all Noah. And he was full to the brim of thanksgiving. Noah didn't offer the sacrifice out of a need to, to have a good fortune or a desire to keep God happy or to appease him. Noah offered this sacrifice out of a heart of, a, of pure gratitude his natural inclination about leaving this ginormous wooden litter box was to say thank you. It seems like for us too, maybe sometimes, for about the past year or two, that maybe perhaps we're kind of living in a little bit of a dark ship, drenched in the stench of mess of every animal on earth. During this time, we might feel like we've been tranched around by the winds and the rains and the waves. So what do you think is our first response to build an altar? Is our first response to say what all we've been through is to say, thank you? I don't know if you're like on me on most days, I'm kind of like, what the heck was that? If I'm being really honest. We all know that this, through the past 18 to 24 months, between it's been tough. Let's just be real about it. Between the pandemic and other cultural and relational changes, things in our lives or things, our, our boats, <laughs> our proverbial boats have really been rocked. And just like Noah and his family, maybe, again, we feel like we've been dragged through a flood and we've walked through way too much excrement. And many of us have had enough. A recent article titled, Why Everyone is So Rude Right Now, caught my eye on Apple News Feed. And the writer, Belinda Lescombe, shares the following with the readers of Time Magazine on the October 15th issue. She writes this. She says, September 2021 was a bad month for manners. On the 21st, a woman pulled a gun on servers at a Philadelphia fast food restaurant when they asked her to order online. On the 16th, several women from Texas pummeled a hostess at a New York City family-style restaurant. 
A few days prior to that, a Connecticut mother was investigated for slapping an elementary school bus driver as that same week a California woman was charged with felony assault for attacking a Southwest Airlines flight attendant and dislodging some of her teeth. Of course, it's the people that have lost their ever-loving minds that these incidents make the news. But they are also a reflection of deeper trends. Luscombe goes on to say that Americans appear to have forgotten their niceties, especially when those whose job it is to assist them. Lawyers are reporting ruder clients. Restaurants are reporting ruder clients, ruder customers. Flight attendants for whom rude uh, travelers are no novelty and are reporting mayhem. FAA fines for unruly behaviors have already exceeded a million dollars this year. Visitors at, to the Indiana University Health Systems are now greeted by a sign that reads, please take responsibility for the energy you bring to this space. Your behavior matters. Why? Why? I mean, is there something that can even begin to explain these characteristics of a for forgetful society or a less than appreciative society? Bernard Golden says, he's a psychologist, and he says that we're going through a time when psychologically, physiolo physiologically, people's threat system is at a heightened level. This period of threat has been so long that many have had a damaging effect on people's mental health, which for many there has been further de debil debilitated by isolation, loss of resources, the death of loved ones, and reduced social support. During COVID, there has been an increase in anxiety, a reported increase in depression, and an increased demand for mental health services, he adds. Lots of people, in other words, are on their very last nerve. This is true, as he says, whether they believe the virus is an existential threat or not. Half the people fear COVID, said Golden, and the other half fear being controlled. It's almost as if we have lost our social cohesion. We have lost our sense of togetherness and working together. <laughs> Suddenly being on a boat full of animals doesn't sound too bad, does it? This forgetfulness of manners and respect for one another has become a huge societal problem. And it would be real easy for us sitting here today to throw our hands up and declare that this is, this is too much. I didn't come to church to hear about this. All this negativity in this world. I want to come to be lifted up. I want to come to be reminded of the goodness and the grace of God. Well, hang on, because it's coming. I'm going to tell you here in a little bit. I'm going to get around to it. See, I don't know that this is necessarily a societal problem, all this negativity, more than I think it is a memory problem. We have forgotten about two things that are uniquely woven together. And that is gratitude and grace. Gratitude creates within us a deep sense of happiness and satisfaction, which in turn enriches our relationships. It nurtures the formation of new friendships and underlies the very foundation of human society. Gratitude is the practice of actively remembering and experiencing Expressing the grace which are benefits we do not deserve and the goodness bestowed in our lives. Gratitude is recognition. Now the English word gratitude stems from the Latin word gratia, which means to give thanks. The Bible takes this one, this word, one definition further. In the Bible, gratitude is the word eucharista, which stems from the word charis, which means grace. Grace, a favor, 
an act of goodwill, a loving kindness for which we do not deserve. Eucharista is an offering of thanks out of abundance, out of the abundance of grace that has been shown to us. It is to give thanks to God with pleasure and delight because we have received delight and pleasure from the grace that has been given to us. See, and here's the thing. Eucharista is not a horizontal practice. It's not a give and take. It's not a to and from. It, grace does not travel one way and then come back again. Eucharista is reciprocal. It is a cycle of giving and receiving all the same time. It is grace abounding. As we receive grace, as we acknowledge that God has given us grace, that should fill us up to overflow and for us to be able to extend grace. In short, by choosing to practice gratitude, we choose the grace that God has offered freely to us and offer it freely back to him and then to others. It's important to notice that the gratitude that we are talking about is not just living out of words like, such as thank you. Practicing Eucharista flows out of a sentiment of thankfulness. The gratitude for God's grace is more than a mere recognition of God's grace, but it is a felt response. It's that we feel it, we know it is it within our soul that intrinsically demands that we express this response. It's like that thing, you know, I'm so excited, I just can't hide it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I want, I want you, right? That song, 80s, never, 70s, never mind. But you know, it's that if we bubble up with grace, when we become... When we become a people that are so full of accepting and acknowledging of God's grace, and we allow that to outflow of us, guess what? Some societal problems can be reduced. When we act with grace, our lives, our relationships, and our communities can experience transformation. When we are full of grace, then we can be greatly full. See, Noah had very few options. For Noah, he had gone through a really difficult time as well. And for Noah, there was no going back for him to the way things were. As much as he wanted to, as much as he wished it, the world where he and his family had lived, it was gone. All they had were each other. They had new opportunities. They had, they had the promises of God that was with them. And as much as I'm sure that he and his family would have loved to have stayed where they were, they couldn't. They absolutely couldn't. And that's so much like us. When things change and where things get out of our control, we grasp for the things that bring us the most comfort. And the things that bring us the most comfort are the things that are most familiar to us. See, in the, in the aftermath of a horrendous time, Noah made the conscious choice to accept the blessing of where God had placed him and his family. He made the choice to move forward in their new reality with a new sense of hope and appreciation. Like Dora the Explorer, we made it. Only by the grace and the goodness of God. Noah made a, a choice to honor God 
He made the choice to move forward in the acknowledgement of God's grace, and he exuded a sincere gratitude. Noah, Noah made the choice to be grateful, and may it be within us to do the same. Amen. Let us pray. God of great love, we clearly remember the times when we have thought you to be less than loving. We recall with pain the dark times in our lives when we could not see your light, nor did we seek it. Father, we remember with remorse the occasions when we did not recognize the small pleasures of our abundant life. Father, we confess that we have been quick quick at times to criticize and hasty to condemn. Forgive us for all that has come before us and grant us grace to go forward in your forgiving love. Giver of all grace, please receive our confessions in which we silently raise to you now. My friends, listen to this good news. God is always present to us, even when we are not present to God. And the love of God never lets us go, even in the times where we are wounded beyond words and let go of God. You, you are forgiven in the grace of God's love. Let go of your regrets and embrace the goodness of God. God's love and his grace. Amen. This Thanksgiving, chances are you'll be sitting at a table. It might look like this one. It might not. But most likely at some point, you'll sit down with your family and loved ones and share a meal. There'll be turkey, stuffing, casserole, cranberry. And if you're lucky, even pumpkin pie all placed on the table before you. Then the conversation will start. Conversation about all kinds of things with people from all kinds of backgrounds and beliefs. And maybe, just maybe, you'll have the chance to express what you're thankful for. And that's probably your cue. Because maybe God has prepared this moment for something more than just a meal. So amidst all the food and decoration and conversation, this Thanksgiving, what are you bringing to the table? As we celebrate communion, our family meal together, what are you bringing to the table? Are you bringing heartbreak? Are you bringing judgment? Are you bringing joy? Are you bringing a sense of gratitude and thanksgiving? No matter what it is that you carry with you, no matter what it is that you're bringing, know that you are welcome at this table. And you may lay it down there, and we may feast on God's goodness together. Will you please join me in this litany of prayer? God, giver of all good things, it is in your abundant provision that we gather this day. With your word, the earth grows, plants that yield seeds and fruit trees that bear fruit, filled with seeds that continue the gift of life. In your love, you provide both manna and quail as you free us from what binds and oppresses us. Even now, you set the heavenly banquet table around which we all will gather. Your provision knows no end. For this we give you thanks. Jesus, the bread of heaven, the wa living water, your grace sustains us. Like a mother nursing her beloved child, you feed us with your very body. You teach us to share in your ministry of compassion, wholeness, and reconciliation. 
The generosity of your love fills our empty places so that we may bring your love to the empty places in the world. Your provision knows no end, and for this we give you thanks. Holy Spirit, truth in this world, you hold us in communion. You dwell within us, continuing to make real the presence of Christ. Though we are many, it is your communion that makes us one body in Christ. Your provision knows no end. For this we give you thanks. Please feed us once again with the loaf and the cup. May they be the very bread of life and cup of salvation, binding us with Christ and with one another. May the grace of this table extend beyond this time and place so that we are joined with the faithful of every time and place. As a sign of our communion in you, Lord, we join our voices to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The very first thing that Jesus did with both the loaf and the cup was to give thanks for them. We hear these words every time we celebrate this meal, but do we really reflect on the depth of this thanksgiving? Are we thankful? Can we have thanksgiving for God's provision for the company with whom Jesus shares it? For the broken body that will bring wholeness to the broken, for the bloodshed that will bring the forgiveness of sins to many for our communion here today. This invitation to this table, it is not exclusive. Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners, Pharisees and legal experts. Regardless of how you come or what you bring to this table today, know that you are welcome and Jesus desires to share this meal with you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood, the life, the love of Christ poured out for each one of you. You will find your communion elements in your pews if you will just go ahead and let us have this time as we reflect on the song and think about God's great gift and his grace for each one of us. the bread and bless the cup you served a sacrifice of love holy 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 i want to see your glory of all that you are and all that you've done jesus the took the altar and made it a table and nothing can separate what you bring together now and forever i will remember now and forever i will my hope alive in me worthy 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 i'm caught up 
up in the glory of all that you are and all that you've done. Jesus, the Lamb of God, oh, what a Savior. You took the altar and made it a table. Nothing can separate together now and forever I will remember now and forever I will Please join me in this prayer together. Dear Jesus, every time we eat and drink this meal together, we do it in remembrance of you. This great Thanksgiving is a reminder of your love and provision. As we leave the table nourished in body and soul, we ask your blessing on the many tables where we will eat at this week. May they be tables of abundance and blessing for those who break bread together. We also lift up those who will not know tables of blessing this week due to poverty, loneliness, broken relationships, or distance. May you provide for them as each has need, and may the many tables of our lives not be limited to food, but also love and compassion for others. Amen. Would you stand together as we sing our closing hymn number 92 for the beauty of the earth? We'll sing the first verse and then the last three, so four, five, and six.
Go now with the grace of God to share God's many gifts with all the world. Take care to remember that God has given us these gifts. So go now with thankful hearts. Go forth in joyous thanksgiving, living the good news of Jesus Christ every day and everywhere. Amen.